So now that we've modeled our table, uh, we're going to move on to 3D modeling the lamp. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to uh, add this table to a layer uh, so that you can get used to working with layers in Maya. This is also really helpful once you start to have a lot of different objects in your scene. So to do this, we're going to select the table and then to your right, uh, if you're in the attribute editor, just switch over to the channel box layer editor tab. And so in the bottom, we have our layer editor. And all you need to do is go to layers and click create layer from selected. And so Maya automatically now has added the table to a new layer called layer one. So we can double click on layer one and rename it. So we're just gonna name it as table. So now you can see that I can easily show or hide this layer and this will just make things easier to work with. So for now, let's turn this off. So before we go ahead and model our lamp, I want to show you uh, the different polygon primitives that you can work with to start out. So if you go to create polygon primitives, you'll see here a long list of polygonal objects that you can start use as your starting point uh, to model something. So you can see we have a sphere, a cube, a cylinder, cone, torus and so on and then in this next set we have uh, more complex geometries such as a platonic solid a pyramid prism pipe a helix a gear or a soccer ball next we have the super shapes which is a super ellipse a spherical harmonics and an ultra shape so if we go ahead and take a look at a couple of these we'll see that these are excellent starting points to model something uh, that can be as basic as the sphere or from there can evolve into a more complex shape. Uh, we're gonna start looking at our sphere. So click on sphere and go to the right to your attribute editor panel. Click on that. And once you're on your attribute editor, you should go to the polysphere tab so here on top you have several tabs, right? The first one is the one that shows you um, the translate, rotate, and scale settings of the object. Obviously when you first create it, everything is at zero. And then next to that we have a polysphere shape tab. We won't look into this one now. The one I want you to look at is the polysphere tab. So once you're here, And also input a specific amount here. We can add subdivisions along axes. We can also add subdivisions along height. So already with these three settings, you can completely change your shape from a sphere to something else. As you can see now here, if I lower all my subdivisions to three, which is the lowest number. I can switch the radius around, etc. So now I'm going to delete this shape and let's go back to create polygon primitives. And now let's look at some other shapes. So for example, the cube, which is pretty straightforward, you can change its width, you can change its height and its depth. And you can also add subdivisions along its width height and depth. We'll look into subdivisions after looking at these polygon primitives and you're going to see why it's important to be able to add subdivisions to an object. So let's delete this cube and now let's go ahead and create a torus. And now that you have the torus, again go to poly torus and explore the different settings that you can use for torus. You can 
change its radius. You can change its section radius, which means the inner actual round profile of the torus. And you can also add subdivisions along its axes or its height. I'm going to delete the torus now and I'm going to go back and create this time a platonic solid. So platonic solids are geometries with identical faces and each platonic solid is made of different numbers of these faces. So for example, a tetrahedron has one, two, three, four sides, right? A cube has, again, all equal square sides. This is an octahedron, etc. And again, for each kind of platonic shape, you can add subdivisions. You can change the mode of the subdivision. So if you want to work with quad subdivisions or triangular subdivisions, this looks like geodesic dome almost. So again, go ahead and explore the different platonic solids that you can do with this function and also the different settings for each one and just get familiarized with it. And the same way that we've kind of gone through each one of these polygon primitives, I want you to keep going on uh, with all of them so that you are familiar with what each one can do and start to imagine uh, maybe shapes that are not exactly what this uh, solid is. So for example, this helix, what else besides the helix could you make out of this shape? Uh, what could you use it for if you wanted to model something else? And just go ahead and kind of play around with all of these different geometries and see uh, the different things you can get out of them. And once you're done exploring all of these, we're going to go ahead and look into component editing mode. So in order to look at uh, component editing, we are going to go back and create a cube. And once we create our cube, let's go again to polycube and let's change the width to 5 by 5 in height and 5 in depth. And let's go ahead and add a couple of subdivisions. So let's add four subdivisions along with height and depth. And now that we've added these, I want you to right click with your mouse over the shape once it's selected. And while you're clicking the mouse, I want you to see the different options. Uh, we have edge, vertex, vertex face, face, multi, UV, which we'll look into this afterwards. Um, so again, go ahead and right click and hover your mouse over. And let's go ahead and see what edge does. So let's click and drag edge with your right click and release. So let's go ahead and click. Now with your cube selected, I want you to right click on your mouse. And while you're right clicking on it, look at these different options that open up in the mark marking menu. So we have edge, vertex, vertex, face, face, multi, UV, and ob object mode. 
Uh, you can release your mouse now. So if you're not too familiar with the Maya interface and navigating in Maya, this kind of uh, navigation may be a little bit uh, difficult to get used to in the beginning. And that, this is why I want to show you an alternative to this menu. So on your right side, where you have your attribute editor, we've also seen that we have different tabs. So we have the channel box layer editor, which we've already seen. And under that, we have the modeling toolkit. Now, the modeling toolkit is a really useful toolkit to have uh, available, and it's going to help you reach all of these different functions that you can access by right clicking on your mouse as well. But if you're not used to this way of working, uh, I advise you to kind of use the modeling toolkit. It's much easier to, to work with and it has the same functions. So here in the top of the modeling toolkit, you'll see that we have uh, our object mode, which is this first cube. Object mode means that you're working with your entire geometry, right? And then next to that, we have a vertex selection mode. And you can see now that I've clicked on it, it's activated these vertices along all of the different subdivisions in my cube. OK, and I can select a vertice and click and drag it in and out with my move tool. Or I can even work with the rotate tool and rotate them. Or I can even scale them. So this is another way to model in Maya. Um, once you have a polygon primitive, you can really get inside of it and add details or start to deform it the way a sculpture would work with uh, on kind of like a marble stone uh, statue or maybe with clay. I think it's actually more similar to working with clay because you can, you know, like pull things out or push them in. So I'm going to go ahead and undo all of this. And we're going to keep looking at the modeling toolkit menu to see all the different functions that we can do. Uh, again, you, to select your vertices, you can click and drag your mouse over each one. You can also select several vertices at the same time and deform them at the same time. So there's different selection modes. Let's go now to this next one, which is edge selection. And what edge selection does is select all the edges in your subdivisions. And again, you can shift, hold shift and click on several edges, or you can drag a window to select several ones. And one uh, cool trick to use is clicking on the first edge and then if you hold shift and double click on the next one see how it selected that whole radius of edges in my shape so let's go ahead and try this again if i click on one edge and i hold down my shift key and double click on the next one it selects the whole radius so this will be really useful once you're working with more complex geometries to use the selection mode. Again, now that I've selected, for example, these edges, I can work with my scale, move, or rotate tools and start to deform my geometry. For example, here now I've widened parts of my cube. And remember, you can also move uh, your pivot point to specific locations. And this also helps when you're working in this component mode. So for example, if I click on D and I move my pivot handle here, it's going to scale everything from this reference point, right? So Everything we've learned before, uh, we're kind of just adding on to it. So I'm going to go ahead and now click on this next button, which is the face selection mode. Uh, with face selection mode, you can select several faces by clicking 
shift and selecting. And again, you can move them up or down. You can work with rotate. Or you can also scale faces. from your geometry. Again, we have object mode, which is uh, your overall geometry. If you want to just kind of edit your overall geometry in its uh, different scale axes, or if you want to just move your whole geometry around, or you can go inside your geometry. So we have vertex mode, edge mode or face mode, which you can use to edit parts of your mesh. Let's go back to object mode and let's go ahead and delete this poly cube. And we're going to now look at soft selection. To look at soft selection, I want you to go ahead and create a plane in polygon primitives. So once you've created your plane, I want you to Go back to the attribute editor and under polyplane, let's make this bigger so we can really experiment with soft selection. So let's go ahead and make the width 10 by 10 in height. And for this example, I want you to add, let's see, about, we want to really have a lot of subdivisions in this example. So let's make it 50 by 50 subdivisions. And now that we have our subdivisions, let's go back to the modeling toolkit. And let's go ahead and select uh, the vertex mode. And if you remember what we were looking at, you can select different vertices, right? And if you hit shift select, you can even select them from different parts of your plane. But what happens now if I go ahead and hit B in my keyboard? You see that this sort of gradient has popped up. This gradient is soft selection. If you hit B again, it goes away. So another way to access soft select is in your modeling toolkit. In this section here, it says soft selection. If you click on this, it activates it. And then if you click on it again, it turns it soft selection mode off. If you have it on, you can change the way that soft select works by changing this number here. So basically soft select is an organic way to 3D model your geometry. And what this number does is let's go ahead and switch it to one. For example, it changes the radius of what selection you're working with. So let's go ahead and see this. Uh, if I select some points and I go ahead and hit W for move, and I move this up, you can see this smooth curve Whereas if I turn soft select off by hitting B and I try to do the same movement here, you'll see that the edges are not smooth, right? It's way sharper. So soft select is really useful for making organic shapes. For example, uh, modeling topographies. So if you wanted to model out a landscape with a lot of hills, you could work with soft select to do this. Another example that maybe is closer to what we're working on today with our lamp is maybe you wanted to have an organic looking lampshade. You could work with soft select to get that. So again, let's go ahead and turn soft select on uh, by either hitting B on your keyboard or turning on the soft select mark. And just go ahead and experiment a little bit with it. So try deforming this plane, maybe try making a landscape or an organic looking shape and just get 
familiarized with soft select. Remember, you can also work with rotate, and it'll organically rotate your shape because soft select is on. Or you can also work with scale. And again, remember that you can always move your pivot point around. So go ahead and experiment a little bit with this tool. And remember, the more subdivisions you have, the more organic shapes you can obtain. Obviously, if you have less subdivisions, you won't be able to get these organic transitions. And then another thing I want to show you is another shortcut. So here, instead of uh, changing your soft selection radius here, the way that we've been doing it, right? So for example, right now I just typed in five and you can see that my radius is much larger. But I can also hit B on my keyboard and left click and drag my mouse. And this is another way of changing my soft selection area. So whatever is easier for you to work with, either you can change it with these numbers or you can hit B on the keyboard, left click on your mouse and drag. Go ahead and try both of these. So what soft selection does, it, it lets you select vertices, edges, or faces, or even multiple meshes in an organic way. It's useful for making smooth slopes or contours on your model without having to transform each vertex manually. It works by maintaining a fall off from selected components to the components around your selection, and this creates smooth transitions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to object mode here and delete this example. And I'm going to go ahead and create a cube. Uh, again, I'm going to go to my attribute editor under polycube and I'm going to make this cube larger. So I want to work with 10 by 10 by 10 cube and I want to add maybe 15 subdivisions. along its width, height, and depth. And now again, let's go back to the modeling toolkit and let's take a look at other functions we have here. So another really useful one is symmetry. But basically what symmetry does is it lets you um, work on one side of your model and it'll symmetrically do the same to the other side. So this is really useful, for example, when you're working with characters that are completely symmetrical, for example, a human body. If we go into our face selection mode and we go here to symmetry and let's go ahead and try object X. So we know that we're working with symmetry because not only is it on here, but we also have here a notification saying that symmetry is working and we have object X and we also have it activated here. So we have symmetry object X. This means that it's going to be anything we model is going to be symmetrical along the X axis, which is this one right here. So now that I'm on face selection, what happens if I select this side of the face? You've seen that it's also selecting the left side, right? Maybe I want to go and take soft selection off. So I'm going to hit B on my keyboard and I'm going to be more specific about what I'm selecting. So I'm going to select this face. So I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to select a couple of faces here. And now I'm going to orbit and you'll see that the same faces have been selected on the other side of my geometry. 
So what happens if I want to scale this out? You see that it's symmetrically scaling both sides, right? So again, this is something you can imagine uh, would be very useful if you're doing character design or maybe you're working also with furniture, which is completely symmetrical, for example, a table or a chair. So let's go ahead now that we've worked with object X and let's go and switch now to object Y. And object Y is going to be working along this vertical axis, right? So anything I select up here will symmetrically select in the bottom. So if I go ahead and select the top of my cube, it's also going to select the bottom. So if I scale this up, you'll see it's done the same on top and on the bottom. So again, go ahead and experiment, uh, see what you can come up with using your symmetry mode turned on and just trying out different settings for it and see what you come up with. You can again work with soft selection mode and symmetry. So remember you can do combinations of things. You need to make sure that if you don't want to work with symmetry that it's turned off. Uh, it can be easy to forget and you can just leave this on and keep going with your 3D modeling and all of a sudden um, start editing things symmetrically when you only wanted to work on one side. So make sure to turn this off whenever you're done. So just to recap, we've looked at our object selection mode. We've also looked at component selection modes, which are the vertices, edges, or faces of a geometry. We looked at uh, soft selection, and we also went in and looked at symmetry. Now that we've added on and learned all of these things, we're going to go ahead and see if we can use all of this knowledge to 3D model our lamp.